Now, I mentioned Barry Trower, the, the, the physicist lecture, physics, uh, advanced physics lecture. This is his handout, and all I did was type up the, his words. What he is saying for children, a little girl sitting in a classroom with either a laptop or her iPad, her ovaries are being irradiated. 57% of the follicles in her ovaries that are producing eggs are being damaged. The essence of this is that her children, she won't know the effects. She can't feel it. But her, her child is going to be damaged as well. And by the third generation, there's complete infertility. Barry Trower says that we don't have the right to do this to other people. Professor Johansson at the Carolinas Institute in Stockholm says five generations. So what we're looking at is one physicist saying three generations and it's infertility for the human race, and another one saying it's five. And it's not just here, it's happening from uh, in Australia. Uh, a woman I'm in contact with, Penny Auckland, in New Zealand. Her workers got sick and her animals died. You go to um, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, uh, 20,000 cattle died in one night. No explanation. I got a, a call this morning, or an email this morning, from Serbia, Italy. The leukemia in the village, the Vatican, on a Vatican mast, uh, and they won. They won their case to stop the radiating of their children. France, the UK, Ireland, across America, we have dancing cows because they can't stand the radiation. In Dunham Wexford last summer, five cows were found dead in the field, and as they said, the was lucky that the farmer who found them uh, was wearing his, his rubber boots or he would have been dead too. Down the road from me, across the road from Intel, farmer, his cattle, uh, he had calves born without hair. Uh, another chap had 14 horses in foal and uh, 14 bears in foal and he didn't get one new foal. He went over to his field one morning, this is behind him, so, and there were four dead foals in the field. Four, all foals. So, and he said that has never happened to him. These farmers, by the way, don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be labeled as bad farmers. There's John Ryan down in Tipperary. Uh, he got a mask removed from his land because he had to sleep in his truck. Excuse me. He was getting both nosebleeds. You may have seen the article about him. Uh, his grandson nosebleeds the whole time. And it took him five years to get the mast off his land. Yep. Desmond Guinness, on the other hand, it took him over a year. But because he recognized the danger, he had the mast removed from his land. So this is all the technology, all that's happening in Rath uh, There were. Now this is an apocryphal. This is one that I've yet to, to, to nail down completely. So bear with me on this one. Give me a bit of scope. But the word on the ground with this one is that in Rafi near Kara, <coughs> there were um, mass went up, and the farmers didn't like the idea of it. So they took it down one night. And the company went and put another one up. And the farmers <coughs> weren't going to be beaten. And so they went and took that one down. <laughs> the company put a third one up. And the farmers pulled that one down as well. And then the company gave up. Supposedly. So that's the, that's the story that I've been told, and I'm just relaying it. And when I get verification of it, I'll let, let you know to watch this space. But the point of this is that in three generations, children will be infertile. And in the meantime, the children of this girl could be autistic. Other ADHD, 
psychological disorder, and on and on until hu the human race is nearly extinct and it's around. Okay? okay, and it's not as if they didn't know it, by the way. <coughs> this goes back, this is uh, from 1973 in Warsaw. Now there's a whole history attached to the suppression of this, and, it, and I don't want to go into and bore you with it, but it, it is fascinating. But the ones who are the most vulnerable to electromagnetic radiation and frequencies are the pregnant, children, the elderly, people who are already ill, and hypersensitive populations. The lady from Lucan who rang, and it's tragic, she's lost all her friends, she doesn't know who to talk to, she can't think straight, she's in pain, discomfort, headaches, has to go to bed, and you married people if you met her. You know, she's a looper. Wrong. There are people around this country at the moment who are suffering outrageous uh, pain and injury as a result of this. There's a couple, uh, Holly Moore and her husband, up in uh, north, of, north of Dublin. They've been knocked to their feet when they walk from their house to their cars in the mass that's on, that's on the hill facing their house. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it can't affect you. So, there's no standards for extremely low frequency fields in Ireland, except these ignorant. That's the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Research. Uh, and the paper that I, I wrote this past week referred to the three scientists who say that those standards are absolutely ridiculous. In fact, uh, you, you may have heard last year how the World Health Organization, uh, the uh, IARC, the International Cancer Agency uh, ruled that electromagnetic radiation is a possible class 2B carcinogen, ranking it with asbestos. Now, the, one of the doctors who stood against that, Annie Sasko, she disagreed completely, and for that, she was ostracized from her, her job. Her, her students were taken from her at the University of Bordeaux in France. But there's no structure now for deciding action or discipline in Ireland for exceeding the ICNR standards. It's a free-for-all. You can do what you want, and since nobody can see, and nobody's looking, you can experiment away, and there's no one to say anything, and there's no one to give any evidence. It's completely outrageous that I could be standing on a door for you in Dublin, <coughs> and this, this happened, where they were experimenting in a live environment with sending signals from one van to another, and those signals are going through me. Did I give you give them uh, <coughs> permission to, to do this? No. I wouldn't even know. But six months later, when I got cancer, <coughs> whom I to blame? Besides, if you don't believe what we're telling you as doctors, we're going to send you to a psychiatrist. So, it's a, you know, you're wasting your time. So, um, meanwhile, Ireland has among the highest electromagnetic radiation levels in the world because we're an incubation center. We've got Intel, we've got Ericsson in that loan. Ericsson, there's a reason Ericsson is here because they can do things in Ireland mm -hmm. because of this laxity of our rule that they couldn't do, couldn't get away with in Sweden. So, uh, again, just sad. Don't, don't forget that. The next time, if you hear about it, the next time you hear about it, think. It's not the victim. That's what happens with this whole technology, is they're blaming the victim. Oh, that, that child, he had a heart problem. That, that child had a brain problem. <coughs> Professor Andrew Goldberg says that Spate of young males that are dying, including Fabrice Mwamba, the was a Newcastle football player who had the heart attack on pitch. Um, that there is an interaction between testosterone and microwaves in a body under stress, under physical stress. So just be aware of some of these things and the next time you hear it, if you hear about it, we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. okay. My point here is that people, as we're here, are dying. Two years ago, 
century now. Uh, reporter Anya Keneally on RTE, and it's only run once, one in two people are expected to get some form of, in, of cancer in this country by 2025. It's only 10, 12 years from now. Half the population of Ireland is going to have some form of cancer. This, this is from the Royal College of Physicians in Ireland. And she was interviewing them and commenting on the report. Okay, now, in parallel with that, the Daily Mail says that there's a 30% increase in health care costs. So we've got more people getting sick, more people having to pay more money, and if they don't have the money, they have to rely on the national health. Okay, that's what happens there. The government's got to cut the top budget because of austerity. It's a, a common sense conclusion that people in large numbers, particularly children, are going to die because companies want money from their microwave-based technology. This couldn't be more profound. The, the Romans, everybody used to be afraid of the Romans <coughs> because the Romans practiced decimation. They stand everybody up in a row and they kill every 10th person. Decimation. What we're talking about is a plague unlike anything that we've seen before. And that's why I'm calling this the, the biggest lie because it is a lie what's coming down the road, and they know it's coming, and they're not telling anybody. Half the population of Ireland is going to have cancer. Okay, so why don't we know about this? Okay, well obviously, J.P. Morgan kept it under wraps. Scientists, any scientist who open, opens his mouth about this is being persecuted. They tried to get Ali Johansson um, out of the Carolin in Karolinska Institute because, of course, Erickson sponsored all the Nobel Prizes, and, of course, uh, Erickson would support Al Gore and his global warming or Barack Obama for all of his peace efforts. Uh, in Ireland, the government has earned 450 million euro through its test and trial program. It's testing in a live environment in violation of the Nuremberg the code that was established after World War II to make sure that people like Mengele didn't experiment on live children. And yet, we're doing it now, we're doing it here. But now, this is this is one that is relevant. Dennis O'Brien, Dennis O'Brien as well, and he, he magically became a billionaire through all of this microwave technology. Uh, he owned most of the news outlets uh, in Ireland, either by proxy or outright ownership. He had the Irish Independent. And if you want to submit news to any of the provincial papers, most of them you have to go to <coughs> the uh, Independent because they're, well, they're interconnected now with the newspapers. Dennis O'Brien also backed four of the seven candidates for the presidency of Ireland, including Michael D. So he owns the Independent, he has members on the board of the Irish Times, he is a supporter of, a major supporter of the Irish Cancer Society, an NGO, and he also is a supporter of uh, Amnesty International. You have no place to place a complaint, and you have no one to support you if you have questions. So, and then we have this circumstance around Mary and up in Ronanstown. Mary, Her Mary Herney was the, uh, the Minister for Enterprise and then Health, and she actually blocked investigations, uh, medical studies of the events around Ronanstown Garda Station. Pat Rabbit, <coughs> Rabbit by name and nature, has <laughs> continued in her footsteps. He's, a, he's the TD for the area, and he will not investigate. In fact, he's the one that's promoting the test and trial program, which is in violation of absolutely everything. It's circular and it's a closed 